This is Miracle in a Shoebox, A Christmas Gift of Wonder by Franklin Graham. The first time Jay Kelly heard about the shoebox project was on TV. It's called Operation Christmas Child, he told his mother, and it's so easy even a four-year-old can do it. He smiled and hugged his little sister Lisa. A group called Samaritan's Purse is going to send thousands and thousands of shoeboxes filled with toys and dolls and stuff on a big airplane to kids in other countries who don't have anything. He heard about it again when he was with his family making a Christmas list. When he heard the words Samaritan's Purse and shoebox on TV, he looked up. He saw pictures of sad children. Do those children really have nothing, Mom? Nothing, dear. And we have so much, she said, looking around the room. We should never forget to thank God for all our blessings. Jay ran to his bedroom. He closed the door slowly and looked around. He couldn't imagine what it was like to have nothing and to be dying from cold and hunger. Then he ran over to his dresser. He pulled out an envelope. On it he had written Christmas money. Jay counted the money three times. Altogether he had ten quarters, twenty-one dimes, six nickels, and four pennies. That must be enough to buy gifts to fill a shoebox, he thought. On Saturday, Jay went with his mom and sister to the store. Jay figured his savings as he wandered down the aisles. At the scarves and hats, he thought, I'll give them warm things. He remembered the newscast of Bosnia and the children shivering in the snow. He pulled a red wool hat and his blue scarf from the shelf. He took them to the checkout, where Mrs. Parker, his Sunday school teacher, was working. Well, hello, Jay, said Mrs. Parker. I'm buying these to send to Bosnia. Bosnia sounds important, said Mrs. Parker. I'm working on a project called Operation Christmas Child. I'm filling up a shoebox to send to a boy who won't get any presents this year. That sounds like something our Sunday school class should do, she said. Would you tell the rest of the class about it? Sure. He said, as Mrs. Parker rang up the bill, it was more than his savings. Sadly, he took the hat and scarf back to the display. Then he chose a bar of soap, a tube of toothpaste, a toothbrush, and a tiny toy car. He found a box of crayons and a coloring book on sale. When Jay was finished, Mrs. Parker put two packs of gum into the paper bag. She smiled. These are on me. Look, Jay said quietly as he held out his box, I wanted to give my friend from Bosnia something warm to wear, but I didn't have enough money. His mom and dad looked up. It's okay, Jay, Lisa piped up. I have some money. I'll help, too. Tell you what, let's all help, said his dad. Then we can send something warm. The next day, they all went shopping. With the extra money, Jay was able to get the hat and scarf he'd wanted to buy. Lisa looked at every doll before picking out one with a pink dress, her favorite color. Mrs. Kelly chose a blanket, some little socks, and a rattle to make a shoebox for a baby. Mr. Kelly bought a flashlight. I read that children in war zones are often afraid of the dark, he said. Maybe this will help. Jay wrote a letter to his unknown friend. I'm praying for you. I hope you have a Merry Christmas. Love, Jay Kelly. He placed it in the box with his school picture. Then he set aside a $5 bill to give to Samaritan's Purse to help pay for sending his shoebox to Bosnia. Dad, you know what I would want for Christmas if I were living in Bosnia, asked Jay. What's that, son? For the fighting to stop. You know, Jay, we can't stop the war with a shoebox, but we can give what we can pray that through the Christmas storybook that Samaritan's Purse is giving to each child, they will find real peace through Jesus Christ. Dad, could we pray for my shoebox friend? Sure, said Mr. Kelly as they bowed their heads. On Sunday morning, Jay marched proudly into his Sunday school class with the wrapped shoebox under his arm. As he talked about Operation Christmas Child, his enthusiasm caught on. When Jay finished, all the children decided to put him to join him in making shoeboxes. The pastor even held up Jay's box during the service and asked everyone to take part in the project. Word spread quickly through the whole town. Soon lots of people were busy filling shoeboxes. When the Kellys went to church the next Sunday for the special shoebox dedication, Jay was surprised to see boxes piled high in the sanctuary and hundreds more stacked in the fellowship hall. The pastor had a special prayer, asking God to give joy and cheer to the little ones who would receive the shoeboxes. And the pastor prayed for something even more important, that the children would come to know Jesus and the special, true meaning of Christmas. The next day, all the hundreds of shoeboxes were loaded on a truck and taken to the airport. There, the shoeboxes from the Kelly's church joined thousands of other shoeboxes 
already being loaded onto the big cargo plane. Samaritan's Purse would make sure the shoeboxes got to Bosnia by Christmas. Far away in Bosnia, the war raged on. Ever since his father had been taken away as a prisoner of war, Adnan Basak had been helping take care of his mother and Nina, his three-year-old sister. Though he was only nine years old, Adnan had learned quickly how to survive in the war-torn streets of Bosnia. Their house was destroyed in the fighting, and Adnan found a shelter for them in the cellar of a bombed-out building. After dark, when the streets were deserted, he would creep out to search for food. Often the fighting would go on and on. Day and night they could hear machine gun fire and bombing. Then Adnan would not dare go out. Every day they hoped to hear that their father was alive, but there was no news, only the sounds of war and children crying. Adnan tried to sleep, but he was restless. His empty stomach seemed to roar as loud as the noise outside. His bed, two chairs pushed against the wall, felt harder than usual. After tossing and turning for almost an hour, he finally got comfortable. He looked over at Nina. Even in her sleep, she looked worried. He thought of his father. His heart sank. Who would take care of them? What would they eat? How long could they survive? When he stepped onto the street the next morning, he felt the excitement in the air. Cease fire! Cease fire! Tomorrow's Christmas, someone said. Christmas, Adnan thought. I forgot all about it. Our house has been bombed and our father has been taken prisoner. What do we have to celebrate? There has been an agreement to stop the fighting, a friend told him. We must tell everyone to go to the square tomorrow. They're going to exchange prisoners and a convoy will bring food. There will even be presents for us from an international Christian organization called Samaritan's Purse. Adnan hurried through the dangerous streets to his cellar. He felt hopeful for the first time in months. The next day, people came out of their hiding places. A convoy of white Samaritan's Purse trucks rolled slowly down the bombed out street. When Adnan and Nina arrived with their mother, the trucks were surrounded by men, women, and children. Everyone was eager to catch a glimpse of the precious cargo. A hot meal, thought Mrs. Vasek, as she watched one of the Samaritan's purse workers hand a food parcel to her neighbor. Then a man handed Adnan and his sister boxes wrapped in brightly colored paper. A doll, hoped Nina. She had dropped hers in the street last year as they ran from a sniper's bullets. Merry Christmas, said the man. Suddenly, there was a far-off roar. Everyone froze from across the square. Buses appeared. The prisoners, shouted Adnan. Mrs. Vassett clung to her children. The door to the first bus opened, and out stepped a man in ragged clothes. His face was dirty. He had a beard. He was very thin. One by one, the prisoners filed off the bus. Many were wounded. Some had only one arm or walked with crutches. Adnan's eyes began to fill with tears. Where's Papa, he thought. Adnan looked back at the last bus. There were just a few more prisoners left. Through his tears, he saw a tall, thin figure shuffle down the steps. Could it be? But the man looked so old, it couldn't be. Then their eyes met. Adnan, Nina, cried the man. Papa, oh, Papa, shouted the children as they pushed through the crowd and jumped into his arms. Papa had come home. The family, reunited after many months, made their way back to the bombed-out cellar they called home. Nina and Adnan had been so excited about seeing Papa, they hadn't even opened their boxes. The Vasics gathered around the small table in their cellar room. Mrs. Vasek lit a candle. Open your presents, children, said their father. Mr. Vasek looked at Mrs. Vasek, then the, at the faces of his little ones. He thought back to the prayer he had said late one night in prison. God, if you're out there, show me you care. They were together again. There was food, real food. There were even presents for his children. Papa, cried Nina, a doll, a doll, and she's wearing my favorite color. Look, said Adnan, holding up a red hat and blue scarf. He pulled the hat over his ears. Then he carefully wrapped the scarf around his neck. They fit just right. He decided he would wear them always. Mr. Vasek spotted a children's storybook lying on the table among the gifts scattered there. On the cover was a picture of a young woman and a baby lying in a bed of straw. He picked up the book and began to read the words written in his own language. Everyone watched him curiously. When he finally looked up, his eyes were filled with tears. Anya, children, he said quietly, you must hear this. 
He opened the book and read each word aloud. Our friends in America have shown us they care by sending these wonderful gifts, he said. But God has given the greatest gift of all, his son. Two thousand years ago, God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross and save us from our sins. And now we can ask him to come into our hearts and forgive us. This Jesus can give us new life. Tonight we will put our faith in him. Their father bowed his head. One by one, Mrs. Vasek, Adnan, and Nina bowed their heads too. When they finished praying, the cellar was still damp and cold. But now the miracle of God's love warmed each heart.